Welcome to uh, day two live from South by Southwest. Uh, we begin the day with one of the greatest actors of the last 30, 40 years and, and one of my favorite actors, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Robert Duvall. He is here uh, with a new movie. Yeah, new movie, The Night in Old Mexico. Right. And when does, has it played at South by Southwest already? No, no, the, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon is like a world premiere. In the afternoon, I never heard of it in the afternoon, <laughs> in the afternoon which is great, you know. Thousand people will be there. It, uh, Bill Whitler from here, from Austin, wrote it 30 years ago. It took him 30 years to get off the ground. We only had 23 days to shoot it. Had a Spanish director, Spanish crew, uh, Angie Peseda from, uh, you should get her on here, from, yeah. from Colombia. It was a wonderful experience over in Brownsville, Texas, the most corrupt town in Texas. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> you can do your research and you tell me. But the Rio Grande Valley, I love working over there. It was terrific. Wonderful. Um, yeah, no, the, the director, Emilio Aragon, I just remember, realized he his prior movie I saw when I lived in, in Madrid three or four years ago. It was called Pajaros de Papel. It was oh, you, you lived there? Uh, yeah, for five months. Great food there. Yeah, oh, phenomenal. God. Phenomenal. The best food in Europe. Yeah, uh, Emilio raised the money. He brought his expertise. He brought a crew over from, from Spain, and we shot it down there in, in Brownsville, and it was great working with Emilio because he was... Very persevering and got the thing off the ground. It was it was, it was kind of like a, a minor miracle, really. And since since no one watching has seen the movie yet, tell them a little bit about. It. I believe you play sort of a cantankerous rancher. Well, well, I don't know if it's cantankerous. <laughs> maybe he might be. He's a guy that loses his ranch. The day he loses everything, really, he finds out he has a grandson. So they head from the border for one night in Old Mexico, and uh, he gets to know his grandson. He doesn't know what's waiting for him down there. He finds something new in his life that rejuvenates him and sends him off into the sunset with a new set of values and a, and a new love. <laughs> yeah. Um, w was there anything in particular that appealed to you about this movie? I mean, you played you know, the, a, a, ra a rancher. Several yeah, times well, the character, a Titus Red Bowie. He's a wonderful character. To me, in spirit, he's like a descendant of the two guys in Lonesome Dove. That actually Bill Whitley wrote the, the adaptation for the novel right. Lonesome Dove, and it's kind of in spirit like those guys, and it's just a wonderful character. We waited many many years to get it off the ground, and finally it came to fruition, and it was a, a really a nice nice experience all the way around. Is your relationship with Bill one of the reasons that you made it as well? well given somewhat, yeah, but we had some problems. But then Robert Carliner, who was one of the producers, he kept it from falling apart. It was almost going to fall apart, and he went to Whitworth and said, Bobby said to say that if, if this project doesn't go, it'll be more disappointing to him than Red Bovey losing his ranch in the movie. <laughs> so that helped. That was kind of the catalyst that got right. the whole thing off the ground. And uh, it was a lot of uh, infighting and so forth, like many films have, but uh, it came to be, and within the 23 days, we got it done. You know, I mean, I just worked up at Boston with Robert Downey. We had like 60 days, you know, with the, were, with the big guys. What were you guys working on? We were working on a film called The Judge. It's a, maybe the biggest film I've been in since Apocalypse Now, because I like the small films. Right. I love to do the small films, and, and also television I like to do. Why? Anything why? anything that has a good character that presents itself. Right. I like to do. So I, I assume that that's why you... Tend towards smaller films and television because one of the things. Well, you see sometimes it. it's easier once, it, like I'm not in that category to raise a hundred dollars, a hundred million dollars is easier to raise than five million. Right. So to raise five million dollars for low low budget films is very difficult, and uh, I'm trying to do something now, and you know I got a few more left before they wipe the drool. Oh, don't you say know? that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I uh, but you know I, I, I like to work anywhere. Working with Downey was great. On a big film, and this was this was great too. Both characters I love were different. I, I love the characters very much because I look for characters to play. Because I feel I'm a character actor, really. Whether it be Stalin, whether it's a Cuban barber with Richard Harris, <laughs> whether it's uh, you know a Texas Ranger with uh, you know uh, Lonesome Dove, I like to do different things, and because uh, maybe that's what keeps me going, you know. Yeah, I, re I remember reading in uh, this piece in the New York Times several years ago in which someone described saying that you, I believe it's one of the, the directors that you worked with, saying that you can just, you just disappear into whomever you're playing. And, and your response was, I don't disappear, it's just me playing. But it has to be you turn <laughs> doing it. Yeah. It ha you only have one psyche, one temperament, one set of emotions. So you take that and turn it into whatever the, 
demands of a character art. And, uh, so, uh, but I, I've always thought of myself as a character actor, and I, I like to try different things, different, you know, challenges. Right. But and this was something I waited a long time to do. Is Red, Red Bovey, he's right at the top. He's a wonderful character, and the bill with the throat. And I'm glad I could do it, really. It's a lovely project. What are some of the, the reasons that it took 30 years of gestation for it to, to finally come to fruition? What do you mean, like? Well, you said you wrote it 30 years ago. Kind of what what got in the what got in the way? What prevented it from getting made? Well, he couldn't get it off the ground, and then uh, he tried different times. Dennis Hopper was going to direct it at one time, and then one time in Austin, there was a French guy that was going to direct it. <laughs> we took him with my friend Danny Davis, and Danny Davis threw a pistol on the seat, and he shouted, "He said, oh, Danny, he's a gangster!" And we took this guy to all the barbecue places. This crazy French guy, and then he disappeared, and then a Spanish guy stepped up, Emilio, and uh, so a Spanish guy. Uh, you know, so it has kind of a universal appeal. The, the 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 script in the movie, even though it's you know, it's a Texas-based thing. You know, the 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 identity, the whole movie comes from Texas, really. Yeah, I'd assume that that's one of the reasons that you wanted to have it play at South by Southwest because. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Well, exactly because I think I feel if it doesn't find a niche here, where's it going to find a niche? Uh, I mean, uh, Joaquin Jackson will be there tomorrow. Hank Whitman, the great Texas Rangers, Danny Davis, all these guys from Houston. That uh, like Danny Davis, like he was bred in the Bordellos, what 13 years old and up <laughs> poor, you know. So they <clears throat> they will respond to this movie, I think, because they it's definitely a Texas movie. Right. I mean, you can say it's universal, this and that, and be very uh, philosophical about it, but it is basically a Texas movie. Well, fortunately, you got 30 million people or so in Texas, so that's already a pretty big audience. How many in Texas? I'm, I just made that up off the top 30, of my head. 30 million. I, yeah. Let's hope know. one million see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, in terms of the kind of character actor, smaller movie, did you say, I think I heard you say earlier that you were trying to put something together for you to direct? Yeah, I want to direct something. Uh, I'm working with the Texas Rangers with Hank Whitman and Joaquin Jackson about a, on a script. You know, it's a kind of a family drama, and it's, I think it's pretty interesting. But, you know, I have to find a young name to find leverage financially, you know. It's right. very difficult to get a hold of young actors, and a lot of them never even get back to you. Some of them are bred kind of rude these days. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I want to do it. Uh, and Miss, Miss uh, Laura Berry, wonderful lady, has offered us to use her ranch in West Texas to house 40 people. So eventually, either this year or next year, I want to do this film, you know, that uh, about a family drama. And, uh, and, and, and it, there's a case that has to be un uncovered and solved by the Texas Rangers. Right. And my wife, Luciana, will play a lady Latin Texas Ranger. And I put her in the movie we were here 11 years ago on uh, Assassination Tango, and she had never acted before. I put her in the movie. She stole the show and never let me forget it. So, <laughs> so she, and she grew up in northern Argentina riding horseback, and we went shooting the other day. She got six out of six bullseyes at 100 and, and five out of six at 300. So, and she's been studying Brazilian jiu-jitsu for the last year to get ready to play the Lady Ranger. So she, she'll be ready. So, but you In know, other words, don't cross your wife. Yeah, well, you know, I can cross her, but with, with, <laughs> with, you know, tentatively. But, you know, once again, to raise four or five million, anybody out there have deep pocketbooks, call us up because we need four or five million dollars. And once again, it's easier to raise that amount. It's easier to raise a hundred million than five. Right. It's because, you know, whatever. So hopefully we'll get it done one of these days, you know. You kind of described it as a, as a family drama, I think. I, is there any hesitance to use the word western these days? Well, it's 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 on a ranch. It deals with horses. There will be horses, but it's just it's just a film, you know. And I I don't really quite know how to categorize it. It's uh, it's it, it, it's it's kind of unique unique unto itself. Right. So we'll see. We'll see. But in the meantime, uh, I, I I love doing a night in New Mexico, you know, with uh, Emilio Emilio Aragon. Thank God he found the money. <laughs> came over with his expertise from Spain, and he directed it, and uh, it was great. I like working in the valley down there in Brownsville. And I'm reading a wonderful thing on the King Ranch now. The genesis of the whole cattle industry came from Brownsville and everything, from Mexico up. The expertise, the vaqueros, the charros, all the, you know, in the King Ranch. And I didn't realize this because I once played Robert E. Lee on a film. Right. Because I'm supposedly related to him. Well, before, right. yeah, well, <laughs> so is everybody else in Virginia. But, but actually, uh, 
the King Ranch right before uh, the Civil War, Robert E. Lee was a frequent guest at the King Ranch in Texas. Right. He was stationed here before he went east, refused Lincoln to, you know, to, to you lead the Union troops, and then he ended up, you know, leading the Confederate troops. But he, he, was, in, he was in evidence years ago uh, around the King Ranch, around Brownsville, where the whole cattle industry started. You know, it was a great, marvelous history in Texas. Violent. Yes. <laughs> the same as any other place in the world. But Texas history is amazing. I, I love reading about it. I really do. Yeah, perhaps more. I mean, Texas and, and California have been two of the primary fronts in, in violence and settling just because they were settled later. So, yeah. Exactly. Or perhaps more recent violence. Yeah. You know, you exactly. had everything in the Northeast and the, yeah. and the Southeast settled 200 years ago. Well, that book, The Sun. Or the, the Sun, yeah. I, I read the book and. They say to keep talking about the Texas violence, this and that. And they said, what about the New York violence? <laughs> Killed all the Indians in New York City way back, you know. So don't, it's easy to cast the first stone, but you better be careful casting the first stone. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I have to, did you enjoy the book? Because I, I remember reading a review. This was a book that came out last year. It was supposed to be one of one of the best books of the year. It's a kind of Yeah, I, I liked it a lot. I tell you what I really liked, too, was Empire of the Summer Moon. I don't know that one. Written by the, he was one of the, uh, main editors at Tech, Texas Monthly. Beautiful book on that whole. Why somebody doesn't, I think they're supposed to do a thing for HBO, you know, on Qantas Parker, the real story of Qantas Parker. Because I know it's heresy to say this in Hollywood, but I didn't particularly like the movie The Searchers. I know it's one of the <laughs> great movies of all. I just felt find it. And, you know, Monument Valley is not West Texas. Right. And I, I've always liked John Wayne, but some of the other performances were terrible. So the real story should be told about Qantas Parker and the, the caption of that young young woman. Empire of the Summer Moon embodies that brilliantly. The, whoever I forget the, who wrote that, just just a brilliant, brilliant book. But the song I liked a lot. Too, right. The song. What are some of the movies set in Texas that you haven't been in that are your favorites? Yeah, that have been set in Texas. Yeah. Well, there's the one this year, Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah. That was very well done. Very well done. Yeah, no. And what's his name was brilliant. Matthew McConaughey. Brilliant, brilliant. Have you been watching True Detective? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I, I watched some of it. I just goes in a circle. I can't quite get into it. Right. Well, the 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 finale of the season is tonight. I know that I I'm not fully caught up, but pretty much everyone in and even in this little cafe here have been talking about it. Um, well, it seems to just lay there when I've seen it. Maybe I didn't follow it or not. Right. I don't know. Well, I saw a thing called the Red Road the other night. Did you see the Red Road? I did not. You don't need to. <laughs> um, do you find yourself still constantly watching all new movies and TV show, or do you? No. no. What, what I've done? You mean watch what I've done? No. Well, both what you've done and what else is out no, there. I, I don't watch what I've done too. I watched Stalin about a year ago, and I, I, I think I accomplished what I needed to accomplish playing Stalin, although it was on TV. So. Uh, yeah, I like to watch, when I get all the movies at the end of the year, right. you know, the, from the Academy, I, I tend to watch a lot of them. I watch, I was just inundated with films, you know, watching them. So, uh, yeah, I like to watch them, yeah, I do. What was your favorite movie from this past uh, year? The Invisible Woman, I think, from from England. Mm -hmm. That one, yeah, it's wonderful. Some of the others were okay, in and out, in and out, you know, somewhat. I mean, I thought the 12 Years as a Slave it was, okay. it was very well done. Uh, some of the performances I went crazy about, but it uh, it, was, it was okay. And uh, but uh, Dallas Buyers Club was very well done. And uh, you, know, you know, many many movies. Yeah. Everybody's a critic, you know. Everything goes <laughs> down the street. Everybody's a critic. Same as the Super Bowl. Everybody's a critic. Everybody's a sports writer. Well, before I let you go, is there anything else that you think people should know about A Night in Old Mexico? It, it premieres tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to come out it's, in It's May. a small film. It's a sweet film. It doesn't have gratuitous violence or sex. It's just a nice story that uh, Bill Whitless set forth years ago. And through the years, he's he's improved upon it. And uh, it's it's just a nice movie with a lot of nice humanity and humor to it. And a, and a, and a nice character study for, for all the parts, really. So... So we love the movie, and, I, and I'm, I'm proud of it, even though it's a small movie. It's not a $100 million yeah. movie. But so what? You know, there's room for all. There's room for all. Amen. There's definitely room for a night in Mexico.
Well, thank you very much for coming thank by. You. Thank Pleasure you. meeting you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you.